Um, okay, hi everyone. Uh, yeah, sorry, Josh. I'm just going to introduce you a little bit. Um, sorry, for, for context, I generally when I arrive on a BBB room, you know, I have a little bit of time to tackle with the speaker. But right now, I made it right on time, and I barely had time to say hi to Josh. But I will do it live. Hi, Josh. How are you doing? Hello. <laughs> um, no, doing well. Um, I do think I I think some of the content the uh, content in the Etherpad got overridden. Uh, like I was typing out a whole, uh, a bunch of different stuff with, uh, with other oh. workflows that developed, but I will try to find where that went. Yeah. So George, nothing is lost. Don't worry about this. We will get it back to you. Um, I, I believe, I believe it's my fault. I, <laughs> I grumble, you know, I looked at the pad and I said, oh, this is not a question. This is a pad. And I think one of my health and helps in the background said, oh yeah, I'm just going to wipe this all out, but don't worry. It's still in the history, okay. and we'll be able to all find right. all the gold you had. Cool. We'll, we'll find it. Um, yeah. So, so George, I'm just going to... Uh, sorry, this is my, my task to give you some uh, some context otherwise. Uh, do you have the pad open in front of you? I do, yeah. I have the pad open. Would you be able to take questions from there? Yeah. So we, we can take questions from here. Um, I think we've already answered a bunch. Um, uh, so one of the ones that that's in there right now is uh does it become unwieldy uh to due to the indirection of the edit org source uh to use org mode and the approach for linear programming as a project becomes larger it can um i so i generally use it for i, I find parts of the project that are more useful for it and and to be dry to be dropping in so um like on a large project when i'm working with other people i do not use it as much because you need to actually be able to modify the code however i just recently find out uh, found out about a feature called detangle which is the inverse of the tangle where it will it, as long as there's certain tokens in, emitted into your file it'll be able to take the file and re-update back into the literary programming document which is kind of mind-blowing as a feature i have not had ch a chance to experiment with it yet though um and i think that could work really really well thanks for restoring the, the stuff i was putting in um uh i want to take a look at the files used in your demo uh are they somewhere online so i dropped the uh the stuff i use for the arduino play for the arduino stuff now i was it caveat with that i was figuring out the workflows as i did it so there's like a readme of work i was both figuring out arduino and workflows so it's uh, so the read the initial readme has a bunch of projects as i kind of did them one by one so the workflow becomes more mature the further down the list you are <laughs> um, the ones earlier on are just copy and pasting a lot we have any other questions this is not the same shirt you noticed. Also, the room's been rearranged because my wife made me move everything. <laughs> well, that's fine. Don't worry about it. It looks it looks fine in the background. <laughs> like, I wasn't playing the you know the seven mistake game, trying to see what changed in the background. I I was very interested though in some of the stuff that I was seeing, including this dinosaur in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Right. There, it's uh. This my, is lovely. My... Oh wait. Yeah, it was my five-year-old's birthday party um, in the summer, and um, you know it's been far more useful as a uh, video background than a bunch of five-year-olds were impressed with it. Yeah, sorry, I, I do have to. I, yeah, it ahead. begs a question though, which is, it's a fairly large structure to be made by a five years old. Like it is several five years old tall. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, 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 the idea was I wanted them to to be able to eat them. But it didn't quite work. Yeah, um, it definitely feels like the mouse would be able to fit a five-year-old. Yeah, so I think we're good. Uh, we might want to get back on track. Sorry for getting distracted yeah. by this menacing presence in the background. Yeah. I had not heard of org transclusion. I, I should look into this. Uh, yeah, our work. Okay, I'm waiting for the next one to get typed up. Um, I, I'm gonna. Uh, I'll post a couple more things that. Uh, the, into the chat. Um, so, a couple. I like I, I mentioned uh, in the in the chat 
the first of all that that org uh, entry get thing to be able to so you could put properties into uh, in, you could put variables into properties on your org outline and then have them be re referenced is really 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 powerful because especially because you can call into blocks from other parts of the like, outline you can basically you know how I like, I don't know if anyone here does react, but like, there's something that like very powerful that happens because you could do, you kind of have dynamic scoping over the Dom tree and you get a similar type of power that you get with react contexts in org mode, because you have variables that you could set depending on what's the closest point in the outline tree is. Um, and, and then like have like defaults cascade upwards. Um. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, our workflows, as they are in your life, tie, closely tied to particular projects, um, or are they general workflows? So, um, I think I think that there's general ones like uh, uh, repository source code analysis that I've gone to and used over and over again. There, um, so I, I mentioned down below uh, CodeMot and Jorce. That's a pretty common trick I use to um like just when i sit down with the project to like analyze its history make a movie uh, of how it plays out and that a lot of that is very is easiest to orchestrate in uh org so here, here actually i'll drop uh i'll drop one right at the top of the other cool cool workflows here's an example of something i did oh boy, i don't want that to We'll figure out how to make that not be, there you go. Yeah, so here's an example I did where it was like, um, let me clean that up a little bit, but um, where you basically are using org, within org you use code mod. Like, here's the thing, this stuff is like hard to do if you can't like just write about it and like say, this is what I'm trying to do and like talk about it in prose because you're doing things like analysis and you have to like have it all ready in front of mind. Um, and if you don't have that, and if you have like, you just have an empty document, you can type into whatever, you can type what you're trying to do and then figure out how to do it in terms of these blocks. So like, for example, this is pretty generic and something I, I end up going to a lot um, where you use something like CodeMot to basically uh, run analysis on like, well, what sort of stuff does, it, or, or I, I guess that first one's not even code month. That first one's just Git log analysis. Like what sort of stuff has uh, a person done, right? What files have they touched? And then like, okay, I don't want to see the full list of the files. I just want to get an idea of where, what areas they've worked. So really like take the first few directories over there and just emit that out to the screen. And now we can kind of go by each like author and like figure that out. And then like the next uh, example is me doing me using the code mod project to do something like, well, what's when let's look at coupling. So whenever one file within this project changes, what other files are likely to change? Oh, and I don't care about test files and I don't care about doc files and I don't care about package lock or whatever. And then you, again, you get that, uh, that analysis. It's, it's very useful. Sorry, sorry. Interjecting real quickly to say two things. First, uh, we have opened the Q&A if you want to join and ask questions to George or uh, uh, just like I'm doing right now. And also, George, I am a little lost. You are the green color on the pad, right? I am the what? Oh, uh, uh, I yeah. am I am now the, yes, I am the green color. OK, so no, I, no, I've lost. Green, the... You're the green color. I am now, goodness. Okay, can you tell me at which line you were? Because I was a little lost in the pad on what you were commenting on right now. Okay, yeah, yeah, that was, I'm purple color now. I, so that, that first block under other cool workflows is what I just put in there. Um, okay, cool. It is on screen yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then there's a question, possibly weak understanding here, but why direct use of Tangle already versus org babble? So uh, take something like Arduino CLI. That, that is running at the file system level. Oh, well, okay, no. Arduino, CLI, Arduino CLI works with like the file system. It's like you're telling it, here, here are some files, go do some stuff with those files. So in order to do that at the 
it, and you have to have like a specific type of file system. So in order to do that directly in org babel, I'd have to like write an org babel extension, which are not super easy to write that kind of writes files into a certain into a temp directory in a certain format and blah, 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 which is hard. What's a lot easier is just tell Tangle to just dump the file and have a file watcher running. And whenever it happens, you, it just, it just deploys to the Arduino, for example. Yeah, so, so, so it's basically a way of integrating with things that require the file system. Sorry, George, was there a question for me? I'm not sure I was uh, a little Oh, no, distracted. no, 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 I know. I, I think that was the answer to the question. I'm, I'm, lo I'm now looking to see if there's... Okay, uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, we have also, any more also, George, questions. I don't yeah, know that we To do. give you a little bit of a heads up, we have, uh, we have opened the Q&A right now, and people should be able to join. Uh, but uh, we only have about three more minutes until we need to go on a little bit of a break. Yep. Um, so feel free to answer as many questions from the pad as possible. I don't see anyone in the chat uh, on yeah. BBB right now, so yeah. questions on, on the pad. Uh, yeah, so uh, I'll just put a couple more things. Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, Plant UML, uh, uh, and I will regularly use uh, Plant UML to do both like architecture diagrams and like wireframes using their salt language uh, to for mockups. So I'll write like an entire technical document, being like, "Here's what we should do," and put and be putting stuff directly in it. And people see it, and they're like, "Oh, mockups, great." Um, not directly about oh tree sitter integration because. You can now you can now use tree sitter. So you can use tree sitter to analyze other code files. So for example, uh, I recently wrote a little tree sitter script that would pop open a TypeScript file, analyze all the exports, and grab grab everything that's exported along with its doc comment and just dump it into my document so I can review it and kind of update it just by with a keystroke as, as that file evolves. Um, and a uh, just an honorable mention. I would say uh, I recently found out Org Roam UI. And so if you're an Org Roam user, that's an awesome like visualization where it starts a server and shows you like a little web page with like everything visualized. And just in terms of like, uh, you know, it's nice and cool and useful, but it's also like a great politics hack where like you start a new time on a job or a team, and then you're like, you spend a month, uh, a week taking your notes. So you have like 80 notes or something like that because they're a little bit, and then at the end of the week, you do your one-on-one -on -one with your manager. You're like, here's the visualization and everything. And you're like, jaw drops. And like, yes. It is. It is amazing. Algorithm UI is amazing. I'm a little biased, so I won't talk too much about it because uh, people in the know will know that I've actually helped with the development of Algorithm. But yes, Algorithm UI is so great. I also worked in a team where we were presenting Algorithm and Algorithm UI to people who had no idea of what was Emacs or org mode, but they could see atoms and they could see them being linked and it was so amazing it's just a it, it just works and it's great when things just work yeah all right george uh i any any last thing you'd like to say to the stream before we wrap up no nope. uh put more workflows in, in the document if you if you have any other ideas too uh, i'll cool, amazing I'll we'll be on the right account for this so george thank you so much for your uh for your presentation and for your questions and we will see you later probably thank you bye-bye Bye-bye.